Hey folks, today we're at the YouTube studios in New York and I wanna to talk to you about resolution and why I think it's worth keeping up with the latest technological advances. Before we jump into this video, jump on over to mattgranger.com. You can sign up to my mailing list and I'll send you a free copy of my guide to improving your portraiture. Now, whether we're talking stills or video, no technology will replace a talented artist with a creative concept. But assuming you have your technique and your concept down, I think it's really worthwhile keeping up with the latest developments in terms of resolution, especially as it relates to video. Now, whenever the topic of 4K video comes up, there's always some people that say it's pointless. Most people don't have a 4K screen, the human eye can't resolve it, it's a waste of time and money filming in 4K until the infrastructure's in place. Now, granted, that's a reasoned standpoint, but I think each of those points are wrong. First off, click on the little cog below and you'll see that this video is available in 4K and even in 8K. Now, whilst very few people watching will have an 8K ready display, many of you will have 4K already and have the internet speeds to view it. But before I make my case about keeping up with the resolution race, let's run through a quick history on video resolution. For the first 50 years of television, resolution was measured in lines per screen rather than pixels. The pioneering attempts at HD TV in the 30s and 40s had between 240 and 819 lines, a huge improvement over previous resolutions that used as few as 12 lines. In 1953, Analog Color TV debuted in US with 525 lines, establishing the NTSC color standard and shortly after, Europe followed with a 625 line CCAM and PAL standard. Jumping forward to the 1980s, home computing was taking off and we'd started to talk about screen resolution in terms of pixels rather than lines. The term pixel actually originated as an abbreviation of picture element, pixel. Early home computers such as the Commodore PET used cathode ray tubes to create monochrome displays. Then in 1977, the Apple II introduced the first color CRT display and achieved a resolution of 280 by 192 pixels. That's an overall resolution of 52,760 pixels per frame, or a whopping 0.05 of a megapixel. Computer screen resolution continued to advance with IBM introducing the VGAA standard of 640 by 480 in 1987. Since then, the demand for video games has driven resolution up and up. Desktop monitors have now reached kind of a sweet spot of 2560 by 1600, and mobile devices range widely from just 600 by 800 for really small devices up to 1536 to 2048 for the iPad Retina. That's 60 times higher than the Apple II desktop had. Fast forward to 1996 and digital TV was officially mandated as the new standard for future HD TV broadcasting. And it uses a resolution of 1920 by 1080, equivalent to just over two megapixels, a standard we all know now as 1080p. Today's ultra 4K HD TV, known as 2160p, bumps this up another notch to 3840 by 2160, which amounts to four times the number of pixels as 1080p, and it's coming in at around 8.3 megapixels per frame. And 8K is just taking it to the next level with a whopping 7,680 by 4,320. Or on cameras like the Red Epic Helium we're filming with today, that goes all the way to 8,192 by 4,320 or 35.4 megapixels. So here we are in 2017, and this is my point. Whether you have a high-end display or not, 2.6K is well and truly here in computing, and 4K is becoming the standard in most major TV markets. And 8K is coming. It always happens this way. First, the super premium cameras like the Helium we're filming on today, and then it trickles down through the market. Sharp, Samsung, Panasonic, Sony, and LG all have 8K screens on the way, and the Tokyo 2020 Olympics are going to be broadcast by NHK in 8K, and they intend on starting their live broadcast in 8K from next year. That said, NHK has always been ahead of the curve. They started broadcasting HDTV back in the 80s, a full decade before that resolution became the standard. So it's coming. Whilst we may not all be ready yet, the march of technology goes on. 
So sure, you can argue that the net is too slow or that devices aren't ready or that your customers don't want that high res, but think of it this way. What if you had shot all your footage in the early 90s just before Full HD was stamped as a universal standard and you had shot all your work in VGA? Now looking at where the market is, that resolution is almost useless beyond nostalgic purposes. In time, in my opinion, Full HD is going to look like VGA does now. In 2024, when 8K is the standard and the cutting edge tech is 16K or 40 holograms or something, you'll wish you had kept up with the latest offerings. Look, having said that, I really should address some of the common arguments against 4K and what's to come. Ugh, I don't even shoot video commercially. Look, if you're shooting quality footage, there's a chance it has commercial value whether you intended it or not. There's several snippets from YouTube clips that I've made over the years that I've sold to TV stations overseas, and they all require 1080p as a minimum. Just like selling a still image to a stock agency, super low res files just won't cut it. If you're sure that you'll never want to sell your footage or that you'll never want to watch it in 10 years time once screen tech has advanced, then sure, stick with your cathode ray television, your Commodore 64, and film in the lowest res you can to save space. The human eye can't even see that much detail. So look, when the iPhone 4 was released, Steve Jobs claimed that the human eye couldn't detect resolution beyond 300 pixels per inch from about a foot or so away. It was disputed at the time, and to be honest, I think we've pretty much moved on. Sharp believed that the eye can actually detect 1000 PPI, which goes some way in explaining the range of different 8K ventures currently going on in Japan. Only time will tell. The cameras are expensive, storage is expensive, high-end computers are expensive too. Look, it's true that all of this equipment is expensive, and the top tier always comes at a huge premium. But the bar for all these technologies is moving rapidly too. Computing power, HD capacity, and all of these things are surging forward, and the dollar per unit is actually falling really fast. In time, you won't be able to buy lower than a 4K TV. Has anyone seen an SD cathode ray tube in the stores lately? Okay, my internet connection is way too slow to handle this. Well, I'm from Australia, so I feel your pain. I had about five megabits per second down and one up. So it just meant that I had to plan ahead to leave time for the upload. But to be honest, even if you're not uploading in the highest res, there's still value in shooting it. Four things in my opinion. The first one splits a lot of people, but it does give you cropping options in post. If you decided you wanted to add some text or an image in an area, you can move the frame if you're not using the full resolution. Second thing is downsampling leads to a beautiful image. Try shooting in 4K and exporting it at 1080. It just looks killer, and the same is true downresing 8K to 4K. Thirdly, it gives you the chance to introduce movements in edit, like as if your shot were done on a slider when you didn't have the equipment on the job. And finally, and most importantly, it, fu it future-proofs you. Once the bandwidth catches up with everything else and you have the internet connection and you have the highest spec computer, you'll have the high-res files to work with. If you don't shoot them, you'll never have them. Do we need it? Look, the same was said at every major step forward. Do we need VGA? Do we need 720, 1080, 4K? And in stills, do we need a six megapixel camera? Do we need 12, 24, 36? Technology and the market marches on, whether you like it or not. You personally, as an individual, may not have a burning desire for what's coming next, but it's coming anyway. So my advice is just embrace it rather than fight it. Be ahead of the curve, and who knows what opportunities that might open up for you. No doubt this will be a bit of a conversation starter, so please do share your thoughts in the comments below. Big thanks to Stephanie for joining us today. She came all the way from Philly on the bus to join us here in Chelsea in New York. Hope you had fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. The ride wasn't too bad, but hopefully I could do this again soon. Yeah. So check out, uh, she actually has a channel as well. You can see details of that in the caption below. If you enjoy this, do like and subscribe and make sure you click to turn on notifications so you find out when we upload future content. Thanks guys, we'll see you soon.